Hey, Sneak Peek, it's Jenny, and I'm sitting here with Peter Landisman, the director of Parkland, the new JFK assassination film. I saw this film. It was intensely emotional. I really enjoyed it. I felt like I learned a lot. How did this all come together? How did you decide to make this film? Well, um, I'd written a movie for Tom Hanks about Watergate, um, about Mark Feld, who is Deep Throat, the FBI agent. And Tom put in my hands this book by Vince Bugliosi's masterpiece, called Four Days in November. And, um, you know, I was a journalist before I was a filmmaker, and I was obsessed by, um, almost compulsively, uh, s stories that took the lid off of things we thought we knew, and really we knew nothing. And that was the journey into this. I, you know, I, I kind of pushed aside all the conspiracy debate and nonsense and just focused on people's experiences um, on the ground, the assassination as if it was happening to them right now, today. This was filmed in our very own Austin, Texas. Why did you choose to film it here? It's a great city. I mean, it's a wonderful place to work. Um, it's just enough. It's not too much. It's not overwhelming. It's a lovely place to relax. I mean, making a movie is very difficult. It's 20 hours a day. Um, but uh, primarily we came here because of the Austin State Hospital. Half, half of Parkland takes place inside Parkland Hospital, which is where Kennedy was brought after he was assassinated. And, but Parkland Hospital then has been consumed by a new monolithic hospital. So Austin State Hospital was built as a, in the same era as Parkland. Um, the trauma rooms are the same. And uh, it was a remarkable document. So we decided to take it over. And then once we shot that here, um, we just decided to stay for the rest of the movie, except for the Dealey Plaza scenes, which we shot in Dealey Plaza in Dallas, which is where Kennedy was actually shot. You were talking a little bit about all the festivals that you've been to, Venice and Toronto. What has this whole festival experience been like for you, especially since it it's your first film. You know, Venice was the is the fir first film festival in the world. Um, you know, and the Italians and the French and I mean, they're real cinephiles. It, it's an incredible honor um, to take a movie. Your first movie there is like, uh, you know, it's um, you're introducing your work to people who really understand film. Toronto is very big in the industry. It's very important. Um, the audiences are connected to our business. A lot of journalists. Um, it's a very, it's kind of a coming out party. Um, it's very hyped and heightened. Um, it was, inter it was interesting and exposing and exhausting. And I'm looking forward to the movie coming out on Friday, October 4th. This is obviously based on a true story and involves real people. What was the most difficult thing about capturing this story? You know, it's not, there wasn't anything difficult about it. It was all a challenge, but I, I felt very strongly about being obligated to the power of the story and to honor the rights of the characters and their experience. Um, meaning, um, you know, look, it's a poetic movie, it's an emotional movie, it's not a documentary, it's not a docudrama. That being said, it's built on a foundation of a lot of research and a lot of really getting it right. Um, again, not dealing with the conspiracy, but dealing with you know, as if taking the audience and putting them in the shoes of someone going through this. So the experience of watching the movie is the experience of surviving that weekend. And just being true to our course and our mission and our passion and, um, and delivering the best possible performance. What kind of reaction are you wanting the audience to take from Parkland? You know, just what I said, I want them to feel as if they've experienced the JFK assassination. Not watching a movie of it. But the way I shot it, the, the, the shot choices, the style of, of filming, um, the kind of the visual poetry of it, and then the kind of in your face of it all. Um, it's a lot, I use a lot of handheld camera, and I wanted to give the audience like a subjective sense as if they're in the room. Um, not like a still camera with a, on a tripod, very presentational, but really active, really powerful, really in your face. And, you know, I remember being in nine, you know, on nine eleven in New York when the towers fell. It's where I lived at the time, and remember what that experience was like for those three days. And that's really what I wanted to do here: give that kind of intense, ferocious experience. Do you have any other upcoming projects? Yep. Can you tell us about them? <laughs> I can't. You know, I have like three or four. I'm thinking about um, that. I'm honing in on. I probably shouldn't say much about them. A um, couple of them based on true stories. A couple I've written. A couple other people have written. Um, but I just want to, you know, I want to keep making meaningful films.
This film has a great cast. Can you talk about getting some of these people on board? Yeah, I mean, Zac Efron, um, Billy Bob Thornton, um, Marsha Gay Harden, Paul Giamatti, Jackie Earl Haley. I mean, these, there are a lot of Oscar winners in this movie. You know, we all felt missionized. We all felt the same obligation to the story. And um, they wanted to make sure that I understood what it was I wanted to do. And I had a very strong vision for this. Um, but they all, you know, nobody made money in this movie. We did it because we wanted to do it. And, um, you know, these are actors who don't need to work all the time. And they're very selective. And I was very proud of their performance and proud of our relationship and, you know, honored by them doing it. Do you have any advice for any aspiring students who want to be journalists, screenwriters, or directors? Yeah, uh, take the word no and take it out of your language and your, and your alphabet and your lexicon. Just accept, do not accept no for any answer whatsoever. Stay true to your vision. And uh, you know, in your darkest days when it seems like it's all for naught, um, those are the days you have to push through because you need those days to remind you why you're doing what you're doing because it's so hard it's hard to get there, it's hard to be there, it's hard to do it. Um, and um, it comes easy for nobody. So if you can't survive those days, you can't survive the process once you get there. Um, and find a story that only you can tell. That's my biggest piece of advice. What's a story, whether it's a movie or a piece of journalism that only you know, that only you know and that needs to be told? That's great advice. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking Pleasure. with us. Pleasure, thanks.